are times NBA players humiliated their opponents. And at number 10, Kevin Durant almost broke someone's leg? He slipped. I think he slipped here. I personally think he slipped. There's a wet spot there. Damn, he caught him. That's a wet spot, man. That's not an ankle breaker. Dude, slipping. But at Personal number opinion. 9, Andrew Wiggins taught a white boy he can't jump. Snaps it outside to Wiggins. Goes by Bull. Mm. Wiggins not only put dude on a poster, the next time he was on camera, everybody saw he put the dunk on a custom t-shirt for his daughter to wear. But at least she didn't get humiliated by Zion Williamson. Like Zion. the kids at number 8. It all started when he showed up to a local gym to spend his day hooping with fans. And one kid decided to talk some shit. I can't tell you. Oh, what that means? And you got better hoopers than you no, ever. He, what? What? <laughs> you don't even believe that. <laughs> Hold up. Last time I checked, Zion's... Six foot six, 280. Six foot six and 284 pounds. Because now Zion felt he had to prove who daddy was. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh my gosh, that's a big he boy. Said, he got me. Cause at number six, Damian Lillard humiliated Shaq in the studio. Dame goes by the rap name Dame Dollar. And what he's done in his rap career is damn near as impressive as his basketball career. Cause not only has he made a song that's gotten millions of views, even some of the greatest rappers of all time, like Lil Wayne, have hopped on his tracks. So when he hopped on a podcast, of course the topic of NBA rappers came up. But once some names got thrown around, he let them all know how he really felt. You think you got better music than Shaq? I think I rap better than Shaq. You think so? Yeah. Now, I'm sure Dame knew what he was doing, but Shaq isn't one of those NBA players who just rap in his free time. The man literally dropped an album called Shaq Diesel that went platinum, and he too made a song with one of the most legendary rappers ever, the Notorious B.I.G. So Shaq wasn't about to let some young kid son him, and he hopped in the booth to send shots. Oh. So yeah, it was obvious that Shaq took the words Dame said Ooh, very Shaq's always but her. He's, he's always but her over at current every players. But as Dame watched himself get clowned online, and Shaq's song racked up over a million views, Dame dropped a tweet letting the world know what was coming, and in less than a day, Dame dropped a song called Rain Rain Go Away. Said that Max was little, that 250 million crispy. Can't recall you getting that when I was cruising on the TV. It's a different era. You the past and you the past. Said yourself that I'm a Tesla, no longer need diesel gas. Kinda like the Cavs, ain't really need diesel ads. And even in Miami, want that on the strength of flash. Oh. Yeah, Dame went oh. in. Damn. Yeah, Dame went in. So after all of that, even though Dame went back to playing for the Blazers, he was crowned the NBA's rap king, and this beat was over. But Dame's just lucky it got him framed. But uh, real quick, our sponsor pro No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm deaf. Tell your family to see. Even Donovan couldn't believe it, so he only responded with this. But Jalen's moment was only against one player during a regular season game. At number four, Stephen Curry humiliated an entire team at the All-Star game. Before the game even started, Mike's picked up what he was thinking about. Somebody tell me what the record is for most points. But he brought up a good question. Taking a look at the record books, only one player in All-Star game history was able to top 50 points. AD. So Steph had his mind on the near impossible, but he was determined. There's no words to explain what Steph was on this night. Not only did he have the most legendary three-point shooting performance ever, 16 three-pointers, he dropped 50 points, carried his team to a win, and won the game's MVP. All that while playing some of the most famous players in the world. But at number three, James Harden humiliated a team because of one of the most famous celebrities in the world. At the time, Harden was playing for the Rockets and one of the best scorers in the league. So no matter what city he was in, he never needed any extra motivation to catch a dub, then hit the club. But when Harden's Rockets came to Philly, little did he know, he was gonna have to deal with one of the biggest, scratch that, I mean littlest, 76ers fan, Kevin Hart. 
on Saturday going to the Sixers game. James Harden, the whole first quarter, he's just, he's off. And I was like, you know why you off? Because you're massive. Your beard stinks. He got mad and said, I'm about to cook you. And after all of that, Harden couldn't miss. But they kept going at it. At some point, I was like, James, this is very unprofessional. You're not even supposed to be talking to me this much. <laughs> so after dropping a 51-point triple-double, Harden not only taunted Kevin a little more, he was dribbling the ball and staying in the half court, and he was just staring at me. During the post-game interview, while Kevin was trying to video bomb the entire thing, Harden just had to clown him one last time. He's from here. I had to, yeah. I had to show him up a little bit. Damn. Harden didn't have to do a little bro like that, but after all, Kevin was just trying to have fun. And number two, another player was forced to humiliate Kobe Bryant just Here's so he wouldn't win. get kicked out of the NBA. February 10th, 2012, is a day that the NBA world will never forget. Because Jeremy Lin stepped into a matchup against the Lakers, and this was his final opportunity to prove to the NBA that he belonged. Today his contract expired, so the Knicks could cut him without having to pay him a single dollar. And obviously not many teams would be interested in a player who wasn't even good enough to play for the Knicks. So Jeremy knew if he wanted to keep playing basketball, it was now or never. Jeremy Lin told me a week ago I was just fighting for my job. I didn't even know if I was going to have a roster spot. Instantly, he scored the Knicks' first points. Then, he started hitting jump shot after jump shot, making and once, and even grabbed Kobe's miss, then turned into prime Kobe. We're spinning, puts it up, and oh, backs it in. Yeah, sensational play for Jeremy Lin. But even though Jeremy and the Knicks were doing the unthinkable and looked like they couldn't be stopped, it was only because Kobe Bryant wasn't even trying yet. And Kobe said you had a great game. <laughs> I swear I looked at the clock like, it's 12 minutes, what you talking about? <laughs> like, what was that? And right after that, Kobe completely took over the game. Big shot, fake, threw it off the glass, caught it, threw it to the corner. I'm like, bro, what you want? <laughs> Spin, pivot over here, spit back on the foot, drop off the glass. I'm like, bro, what's going on? Then he pulled up from like 35 feet on some Steph Curry shit before yep. Steph was doing that. But even though Kobe was doing the most trying to make a comeback and literally telling the other team good game as if he was single-handedly going to win it himself, Jeremy wasn't about to let this ruin his historic night. So he came right back and hit a clutch three. Made a crazy reverse layup. Lynn on the drive, gets inside, backs it in. And carried the Knicks to a completely unexpected victory while finishing with more points than Kobe. 38, 38. to 34. Yeah. I wonder why after the victory, 11 for 29. More points than Kobe. 38. That's your GOAT. 11 for 29. To 34. No wonder why after the game, Jeremy's teammates were stunned. But Jeremy was only fueled to humiliate because his job was on the line. There's one final player who had the game of his life. The 2019 NBA Finals wasn't what fans thought it was. The Warriors came in, and if they stayed healthy, were expected to win their third championship in a row. But the whole time, a player on the other side, Kawhi Leonard, had a secret motivation. The NBA Finals has always been special to Kawhi because it always lands around Father's Day. And ironically, the last time Kawhi played a game on that day, he won a championship with the Spurs. So, he wanted to do it again for That's his best day. Line, but man. the thing was, Kawhi's dad couldn't show up to this.